Hello, I'm Chris DeBikis, Lead Service Technician with Hideoff North America, and today I'm going to discuss troubleshooting some of the error codes that may potentially pop up on your Distomatic. So the first sensor I'll be discussing is your cutout sensor, which is located right on the back condenser at the very bottom there. That sensor is in place in case there's any failures with the valves below the condensers in which your condensate starts backing up and kind of backfilling the condensers. Uh, once the product line hits that sensor level, it'll cut out the entire system. Now the code that you will see on the screen will be error one. Uh, if everything is operating normally and that pops up, all you need to do is adjust the sensitivity of the sensor. So if your light is amber, take your little blue screwdriver and we're gonna turn it counterclockwise until we see it green and then give it another half turn after that and you're good to go. Okay, so next I'm gonna be discussing error two, unable to drain collector. Uh, so that is all in reference to this uh, vessel right here and this sensor, okay? So if your uh, product level is below the sensor, but yet you're still seeing that error two message and the light on this sensor is, is amber, what we're gonna wanna do is adjust the sensitivity of the sensor. So make sure that that light gets tweaked to green. And once it's green, give it about another quarter turn to really lock in the sensitivity. Now, that could be one of the potential causes of your error two unable to drain collector. The other potential issues can be a clogged line or an obstruction in the condensate pump that's underneath the distomatic box. One of the other errors you may encounter is product vessel empty. What that's in reference to is this little glass bottle that's on the side of the distomatic box uh, and this sensor. So as your supply bucket runs out, this is essentially giving us the feedback of what, what product is left. So if you run out of product, you're gonna see uh, product feed vessel empty. Now, during your process, if you still have plenty of supply left and you still see that message, again, uh, it's very possible that the sensor here just needs to be adjusted. So with that, you'll see that it's amber. If the vessel is full, it should be amber, but if it's green and full, you don't want that at all. So again, get the screwdriver in there and then tweak it to the desired location. Okay, so next I'm gonna show you how to adjust the sensitivity of your product level sensor inside the evaporation flask. So every time you do remove the flask, I do recommend calibrating the sensitivity of your product fill sensor that's inside the, uh, the evaporation flask. In order to do that, with your flask off, you do want to make sure that you clean the sensor of any potential debris. Get your flask back in place. And then we'll have to go around the back of the unit in order to hold down the calibration button. Okay, in order to calibrate your flask sensor, you're gonna want the unit off, press and hold down the silver button, and turn your unit on. And as you can see, that button starts flashing between red and green. And we wanna see that go solid green, and then that sensor is properly calibrated. One of the main reasons that you wanna make sure that this sensor is calibrated every time you remove the flask, or after every batch, is to ensure that you have proper filling. Um, if the sensor is not calibrated properly, the valve will either remain open, which will cause a flood out in the system, or it'll remain closed and you won't get any product in the, in the evap flask at all. This will definitely hamper your evaporation rates. Uh, so just make sure every time you remove the flask, recalibrate that sensor. Thanks again for watching these videos. Again, my name is Chris DeBikis, and if there's anything I could do to answer any questions for you, please contact me at the information below.